With few days left for Christmas, the last minute rush is on to get Santa's sleigh loaded up in time. And with shop windows glistening like pre-war, it's a real problem to know just what to pick. Now say there's an idea. Peter Bradshaw from The Guardian here once again, starting with a little Yuletide shopping hint, and I've attached a link to bookshop.org with this video. I want to start with a new film from George Clooney called The Midnight Sky. He's got a beard, and he's also directing it. That's either. It's a spaceship that we hoped would be our future. I have to warn them about the conditions on Earth. I don't know all the details. It started with a mistake. There is an antenna that's stronger than ours. We get to that antenna, they'll hear us. Take a deep breath. As with his appearance in Alexander Payne's 2012 film, The Descendants, George Clooney clearly thinks that at this stage in his career, the father role, the dad role, is very becoming for him, and in a way he's right. Clooney plays the euphoniously named Augustine Lofthouse, a renowned astronomer and theoretical physicist who's working all on his own in a deserted Arctic observatory station. This is because a few days earlier the whole facility had had to be evacuated in crisis because of a global environmental catastrophe. And Lofthouse, miserable and ill, had asked to be left behind. But in the confusion, a little girl has been left behind with him, apparently, and so this odd couple have to travel through the gruelling and freezing snow to a powerful transmission antenna so they can make radio contact with a homecoming space flight to warn them that planet Earth is now uninhabitable. This film floats with a kind of soulful cosmic blandness between two competing storylines. We've got George Clooney and the adorable little girl down there on Earth. Meanwhile, up in the heavens, we've got this space flight and the crew captained by David Oyelowo and the people under his command are basically the regulation ensemble gallery of astronauts along the template laid down by Ridley Scott in his film Alien all those years ago. And in fact, this narrative split is not unlike The Martian by Ridley Scott. All the time we're with the space crew with all their crises and emotions and problems, we're thinking, Wait, what's happening down there on Earth with George Clooney and the little girl? Aren't they the ones at the centre of this story? Aren't they the ones we're supposed to care about? But once we're down there with George Clooney and the little girl, the whole situation seems a bit bearded and a bit ponderous and a bit self-aware. The film glides up to a big, moony, cosmic twist and then swims sedately away, leaving us to wonder, who cares? <coughs> The next film is Cocoon, nothing to do with Ron Howard's film about Don Amici being rejuvenated by aliens. German director Leonie Krippendorf has created that most stressful of things, a coming-of-age emotional awakening. Who is this? This is the new from the neighbor's class. It's Romy or so. When I was in the swimming pool, I saw something in the water. In the Kottbusser Tor district of Berlin, 14-year-old Nora, played by Lena Uzandowski, is lonely, unhappy, devoted to her one interest, which is keeping caterpillars in her bedroom, which have yet to symbolically become butterflies. Then she falls in love with super cool Romy, played by Jella Haase, who may in fact be just as into boys. The best scenes in this movie are the ambient scenes, the swimming pool rapture, the bedroom reveries, the rooftop party scenes, the moments where nothing is happening, but everything is happening. Cocoon is out on Friday on digital streaming services and in cinemas. This week sees the release of Il Mio Corpo, a rather beautiful docu-fictional piece by the Italian filmmaker Michele Penetta.
you get document yeah it was not me get document like as you get so I don't come for the CC I don't mean why you not make an easy guy fuck you why you not make an easy for them may you may you look for a way for them Vanessa has found two real people in Sicily who are by any standards disadvantaged Oscar is a tough lonely scrappy kid who appears to have been emotionally mistreated by his father Stanley is a Nigerian immigrant who is waiting on his visa. Panetta has evidently, and in the most hands-off documentarian way, induced these two people to improvise scenes based around their real lives and in the context of their real existences, and in so doing, has brought these two people into an alignment, a kind of diptych. Without any condescension or sentimentality, Panetta shows us the beauty and the mystery of what they have in common, their lack of self-pity, and their courage. Il Mio Corpo is in cinemas on Friday and on the Curzon Home cinema streaming platform. That's it for this week. To paraphrase the immortal words of Andrew Gold, thank you for being a friend to this vlog. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, give it a share on social media. See you next week. Mm -hmm.